from the mysterious and exotic Far East. Live from Taipei on the island of Taiwan, the Republic of China, where it's 9 a.m. Tuesday, we bring you the 1988 Miss Universe pageant with the reigning Miss Universe from Chile, Cecilia Boloco. Your hosts for this event, Alan Vick. Tracy Scoggins. With the Little Sisters of Taiwan. The Republic of China Contemporary Legend Players. And from all over the world, the 66 contestants for the title of Miss Universe 1988. First, a word from Miss Universe, Cecilia Boloco. A year ago, I came from my native Chile to Singapore, and I was crowned Miss Universe. Now, I've come back to the Orient, this time to the Republic of China, to watch someone else experience that incredible moment. This is a bittersweet time for me. I've had a dream come true far beyond anything I imagined. Shortly, my crown will pass to a new Miss Universe. Perhaps what I'll remember most is the faces of children looking up at me with love and admiration. They are the future for Miss Universe and the world. Now, live from Linco Stadium in Taipei, we begin the competition to select and crown the new Miss Universe for 1988. As our Republic of China contemporary legend players unfold their temple, we present our traditional Parade of Nations, beginning with Miss Argentina. Juanan, Claudia Pereira, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Vanessa Gibson, Sydney, Hamilton Island, Australia. Maria Stanha Krenz, Austria. Natasha Christina Pinder from the beautiful island from Linden, Belgium. Kim Lightborn, Somerset, Bermuda. Ana Maria Pereira, Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Isabel Cristina Medus, Santa Catarina, Brazil. Nelva Farrington, Rotan, Tuatala, British Virgin Islands. Melinda Gillies, London, Ontario, Canada. Veronica Romero, Viña del Mar, Chile. Diana Patricia Arevalo, Bucaramanga, Colombia. Erika Paoli from the beautiful San Jose, Costa Rica. Vanilla Nettas from Klofop, Denmark. Patricia Jimenez, Santo Domingo, República Dominicana. Cecilia Pozo, Guayaquil, Ecuador. Amira Shinbaya, Cairo, Egypt. Margarita Maquerano, San Salvador, El Salvador. Tracy Williams, Nottinghamshire, England. Nina Bjornstrom, Porvo, Finland. Lydia Fetterini, Alsace, France. Tatiana Kraft, Berlin, Germany. Maite Sanchez, Gibraltar. Nunavut, Nuk, Nuk, Greenland. Liza Camacho, again you go on. Silvia Mancia, Guatemala, Guatemala. Arvid Bjornsson, Enschede, Holland. Jacqueline Herrera, San Pedro Sula, Honduras. Pauline Young from Hong Kong. Anna Marquette, Reykjavik, Iceland. Adrian Rock from Dublin, Ireland. Shirley Van Lopez, Kaiser, Aviv, Israel. Simona Ventura from Torino, Italia. Leo Tuso from Kingston, Jamaica. Mizuho Sakaguchi from Osaka, Japan. Sang Jong So, Korea. Elian Fakuri, Zahni Beka, Lebanon. Lidigani from Dudelange, Luxembourg. 
林子玲来自马来西亚 ，Linda Lam from Malaysia。Stephanie Spite from Saint Bernard, Malta。Amanda Olivares and I'm proud to represent Puebla, Puebla, Mexico。Lana Cobrock, Auckland, New Zealand。Omar Sumbura from the Benin Delta, Bendel State, Nigeria。Ruby Jean Hamilton, Saipan, Northern Mariana Islands。Thanks to Bruno Lam from Moscow, Norway。Marta Noemí Acosta, Asunción, Paraguay. Katy Escudero Lozano from Lima, Perú. Perdida Limpín from Manila, Philippines. Isabel Costa, Queens of Portugal. Isabel Parra, Guaynabo, Puerto Rico. Wu Pei Pei, China Republic. Tai Pei, Republic of China. Sonsoles Artigas, Islas Canarias, España. Dipti Alex from Sri Lanka. Annika Davidson, India, Sweden. Gabriela Bigla from Bern, Switzerland. Saudi Khan, Fortune Naki Rankino from Bangkok, Thailand. Cheryl Ann Gordon from the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Nancy Mokharal, Istanbul, Turkey. Edna Smith, Grand Turk, Turks and Caicos. Carla Trombotti, Montevideo, Uruguay. Let's meet our stars. First, the reigning Miss Universe, Cecilia Baloco. Beautiful television and motion picture star, our co-host, Tracy Scoggin. And the well-known television personality from the hit series, Growing Pains, our host, Alan Fitt. It's welcome, I hope. <laughs> We're coming to you from Taiwan, the Republic of China. It's Monday night in the United States. That means Tuesday morning here, so we're coming to you live tomorrow, although you're watching it yesterday. Now, if that sounds confusing, you just try picking one Miss Universe from 66 beautiful contenders. Well, that's why we're here. We have many incredible scenes of this island to share with you, so to share that job with me, please, Huan Ying, your hostess this evening, Tracy Scoggins.
Thank you, Alan. And Shay <laughs> Shay And good evening to all of you folks back home. Isn't this exciting? We're being seen all over the world. Oh, yes, I know. 700 million people approximately joining us tonight, some in summer, some in winter. But wherever you are in the world, the swimsuit segment will be sure to warm your hearts. Our contestants are featured in their Catalina swimsuits against some of the beautiful backgrounds of the Republic of China. Oh, just one more thing, Alan. As each contestant appears, we'll show you at home their swimsuit preliminary scores, but only you at home, not the contestants, not the judges, not even the audience here in Lingco Stadium will see those scores. Our first group, our first stop, will be on the grounds of the world-famous National Palace Museum, which houses Chinese treasures dating back some 4,000 years. Well, let's hit the road. Yesterday becomes the setting for these young women of today, beginning with Diana Arevalo, Miss Colombia. Traditional parasols and hot springs vapors provide the setting for Nuno Bad, Miss Greenland. Backed by a bridge over untroubled waters, Pernilla Natanson, Miss Denmark. This young lady was named Miss Photogenic by the pageant press. From England, Tracy Williams. Senorita Amanda Olivares is Miss Mexico. Music from an ancient lute serenade Miss Canada, Melinda Gillies. On a zigzag tea house walk, we meet Cecilia Pozo, Miss Ecuador, and Maria Stanhart, who is Miss Austria. It's not bagpipe music, but an oriental overture for Miss Scotland, Amanda Laird. From the land of wooden shoes and warm smiles, here is Miss Holland, Annabeth Berenson. From the Philippines, Perfida Limpin. Israel sends us green-eyed, ginger-haired Shirley Ben Mordecai. A graceful swan is a suitable prelude to the gracious Liza Marie Camacho, Miss Guam. The beauty of Asia and Scandinavia meet here. This is Miss Sweden, Annika Davidson. It's a gorgeous country made all the more gorgeous by the beauties and the blossoms on the bridge. And they are Cheryl Ann Gordon, Miss Trinidad and Tobago. Carla Trambati, Miss Uruguay. And from Wales, Lisa Williams. That's a sulfur spring behind Miss Guatemala, Sylvia Mencia. Farther up the falls, Miss U.S. Virgin Islands, Heather Carty. This is not the foot of the falls, but the foot of Adrian Rock, Miss Ireland. The lovely waterfall frames the lovely Miss Argentina, Claudia Gabriela Pereira. And from the homeland of our reigning Miss Universe, here is Miss Chile, Veronica Romero. From the land down under, look over Miss Australia. This is Vanessa Gibson. It would take a big rock to impress Miss Gibraltar. She's Maita Sanchez. And to say Auf Wiedersehen to the waterfalls, here's Miss Germany, Christiane Koch. Traveling north to Yelio Park, the wind and the sea have carved a setting for Miss Dominican Republic, Patricia Jimenez. More Sulphur Springs and Miss Venezuela, Yahaira Vera. We interrupt her sunbathing to meet Miss Egypt, Amina Chilbaya. And here's Miss Puerto Rico, Isabel Pardo. Nelda Felicia Farrington is Miss British Virgin Islands. And modeling her white swimsuit, Miss Finland is Nina Bjornstrom. Look across the sea and a smile for us from Miss Italy, Simona Ventura. From South America, the Caribbean and Central America, here's Miss Peru, Katia Escudero Lozano. Leota Sua is Miss Jamaica. And Miss Costa Rica is Erica Paoli. Among the remarkable shapes on Yelio Beach is the one belonging to Kim Lightborn, Miss Bermuda.
And from the city that hosted last year's pageant comes Miss Singapore, Audrey Ann Tay. With her is Ruby Jean Hamilton. She's Miss Northern Marianas. This natural sand formation is called Queen's Head. And that natural beauty is Miss USA, Courtney Gibbs. The beauty of the Lynn family gardens, a designated historical site, is enhanced by some international visitors. One of them is Miss Hong Kong, that's Pauline Young, and Linda Lum, Miss Malaysia. It's a long way from Europe to the Republic of China, but these ladies look right at home. Miss Switzerland is Gabriella Bigler, and Daisy Van Cowenberg is Miss Belgium. Work on these gardens began a hundred years ago. Considerably younger than that is Claudia Fritolini, Miss France. Just around the corner, but a long way from home, we find Miss Nigeria, Oma Sanbua. This is Natasha Christine Pinder. She is Miss Bahamas. Lebanon sends us Ilian Fakuri. From the nearby land of the rising sun comes Miss Japan, Mizuho Sakaguchi. And enjoying the Chinese sun is Miss Luxembourg, Liddy Garni. The wings of a butterfly complement the charms of Miss Malta, Stephanie Spiteri. And also those of Miss Turkey, Meltem Hakara. A lovely symbol of hospitality is this young woman, our homegrown candidate, Miss Republic of China, Hu Fei Tsui. And the doors here at the Lin Family Gardens will always be open to welcome the likes of Miss New Zealand, Lana Cocroft. Now this Chinese fisherman on Golden Beach can't believe his eyes. The young lady is Miss Thailand, Horn Tip Naki Rankanam. He knows it's an illusion, so he goes back to work. And this young man is just as surprised. Is it a mermaid? No, it's Miss Korea, Young Young Chang. This boat may be searching for treasure, but look no further than Miss Spain, Sonsoles Artigas. Or this lovely South American, Marta Noemi Acosta, Miss Paraguay. This fisherman gives new meaning to the term net profits. Meanwhile, here's the one that got away. Miss Sri Lanka, Dipti Alas. From the islands of Turks and Caicos comes their Miss Edna Smith. And Miss Iceland, Anna Margaret Yon's daughter. A quartet of Latin American beauties gather on this China Sea beach. They are Miss Bolivia, Anna Maria Pereira. Margarita Vecarano Silari, Miss El Salvador. Miss Brazil, Isabel Cristina Petucci. And Jacqueline Herrera, Miss Honduras. In a blue swimsuit by the blue sea, Miss Norway, Bente Brunland. And making a big splash here is Miss Portugal, Isabel da Costa. Well, the fishermen know their friends back home won't believe all of this, so they get some proof. And everyone takes home some fond memories, whether of the beach or the Grand Hotel. That international symbol of friendship, the wave, is extended to the whole world from all of the contestants in the 1988 Miss Universe pageant. The scores you saw, like all of the judges' scores, were compiled by computer. Each of our 11 judges has a terminal just like this one. During each competition, the judge enters a score for each contestant. It can be from a 1.0 to as high as a 9.99. The computer then averages the scores of our 11 judges, and that average becomes the contestant's composite score. 
This was the way they did it in the preliminary competitions during the past week. Of the three areas of competition, one third of the contestants' score came from the evening gown competition, where each young woman wore a gown of her own choice, one third from the swimsuit competition, and a final one third from personal interviews with each judge, using an interpreter when necessary. In our computer are all those scores and the names of our 10 semifinalists. If you're ready to compare your choices with those of our judges, you'll get your chance when, we, when Alan reads the names of our 10 semi-finalists right after this. According to the Chinese calendar, this is the year of the dragon. In Chinese legend, the dragon symbolizes strength and good fortune. Behind me, our troop of players is creating a dragon. We now present Beauty and the Beast. Here are all of the contestants for Miss Universe 1988, dressed in their beautiful chi pao dresses from Long Lines Designs. The universe is going to get smaller now because we are about to narrow the field to our 10 semi-finalists. I'm now going to go over and pick up the computer printout with those names. Now all of you at home remember that the score you'll see for each of our 10 semi-finalists is the average composite score combining all of the three preliminary competitions. And no one here in our Taipei audience will see the scores. Those scores will only be seen by you at home. Good luck to all of these ladies. Remember, the names will be called in no particular order. And here they are. Miss Hong Kong! <laughs> Miss Dominican Republic! They'll be happy tonight in Mexico, Miss Mexico! <laughs> Say hello to Miss USA! Fifth semi-finalist is Miss Japan. Five chances left, and one of them goes to Miss Thailand. Position number seven is taken by Miss Korea. Welcome, Miss Colombia. The ninth semi-finalist is Miss Norway. One more of these young ladies has a chance to be Miss Universe this year, and she is Miss Venezuela. I have just told you the name of the new Miss Universe, but which name was it? 
And what happens to the scores you've been seeing so far? Well, Tracy can answer at least one of those questions for you now. Thanks, Alan. I can help with the scoring question. Now, all of those preliminary scores will be discarded, and each of the ten semifinalists will start even in the scoring. Now comes some real fun. It's your turn to match your wits with our judges, because everything they see and hear from now on, you will see and hear too. Think you can pick the winner from those ten young ladies? Better get a paper and pencil, because we begin the semifinal competitions with the personal interviews right after this from Coast. Welcome back to the Republic of China and Linco Stadium. Now, this is where the evening gets tougher, especially for me, because it's the interview competition featuring tongues of many lands. Well, tonight we are being translated around the world in 17 languages. Interpreters will be standing by on stage if necessary. Our semifinals get underway with the interview competition, and we begin with Miss Hong Kong. She is Pauline Jung, and she made her film debut recently as a leading lady in the film Dragon Forever. Hello, Pauline. Hello. Nice what, to meet you. Nice to meet you. What role did you play in Dragon Forever? Uh, I was the um, uh, main actress in the movie Dragon um, Forever, and uh, I was the um, girlfriend of Jackie Chan, who acts as a lawyer. And uh, we had to fight against these bad guys towards the end, but of course we won, and the police came at last. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. Are you recognized here in Taiwan? Uh, yes, many people recognize me, um, like the, when we have outings and dinners, so many people ask me for my autographs and photographs, and that makes me so happy. Does it help you get a bargain? <laughs> oh yes, it does, certainly. Without me asking for it, they, um, they said they'll give me discounts. <laughs> To take you shopping with me. Now I know you also host a weekly television series. If you could interview anyone in the world, who would you like to talk to, and what would you ask them about? Um, I think I would like to interview um, Eddie Murphy because I adore him. I think he's hilarious and he's such a good actor. And by interviewing him, I guess I'll learn a lot from him, and I can become an even better actress. Well, you're already a terrific speaker, Miss Hong Kong. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Pauline Yun. Next is Miss Dominican Republic. She is Patricia Jimenez. She's a university student studying architecture. Hello, Patricia. Patricia wants to design a total city. It says on her card. What would that city look like? Uh, I would like to design a city like a Brasilia where the government building, apartments building, have a close relation. But I would like a city with a uh, past, because uh, with past, uh, you can live the present, and you can make future. Terrific concept. Suitable for Donald Trump. You wouldn't know him. <laughs> if, you could, um, if you could meet anyone in the world, Patricia, in your travels as, as Miss Universe, who would you like to meet? Si pudieras conocer a cualquier persona en el mundo como Miss Universo, ¿a quién te gustaría conocer? I think I would like to know somebody who writes, a very famous writer, but uh, the writer that I more admire was uh, um, somebody in Argentina who is dying now. Um, but anyway, I would like to meet somebody like uh, Papa, Pop, Pope, thank you. Um, because I would like to talk about our future in this world. It's a terrific idea. May you get that audience. Miss Dominican Republic. <laughs> Miss Mexico is Amanda Olivares. And she's studying business. Hello, Amanda. What kind of business would you like to see yourself in? Well, I would love to have my own business, and I think I would have to have a boutique with exclu exclusive clothing that would be one of a kind in my country. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you, uh, I think, would have unofficially won the award Miss Noisiest Cheering Section here. We had a, a, a preliminary the other night, and did you bring your own mariachi band? Who's here uh, cheering you on? Well, my parents are here, and I have a lot of friends from my hometown, which is Puebla. They came all the way from Taiwan, and I thank them for it. They're a little noisy, but that's our Latin spirit. That's good, yes. I think the Taiwanese are catching some of that Latin spirit. Now, um, you've described yourself as a romantic. Have you pictured an ideal wedding and honeymoon for yourself? Oh, of course. I would love to have a beautiful, white, big dress. I mean, real big. And I'd like to have a, all the people that I love and all the people that love me in my wedding. And I'd like to go to the Greek islands, Greek islands, Greek uh, islands, yeah, for my honeymoon on a cruise. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you'll be taking applications if you're Miss Universe, no doubt. Thank you very much. Pleasure meeting you. Miss Mexico. Miss USA is Courtney Gibbs. I think your cheering section rivals Mexico's. You're one of the most recently crowned misses. Uh, have you been busy since March 1st when you uh, won the pageant? Very busy. It's been a whirlwind tour. We've gone all the way through the United States, Midwest, and the East Coast. Spent a lot of time really seeing what's special about the United States, which is the people. Mm -hmm. It's been great. Now, um, uh, some of the people you met, I know, were, were people you knew before. You were, uh, you were recrossing old paths. That's true. I went back to Kansas City for about four days where I lived during my junior high years. And I got to see English teachers that taught me. I got to see children I used to babysit. It'll be like when I come back to Taiwan in a couple of years. I'll have the same friends again. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, assuming you're not on the road, you, you'll get a chance to vote this year, Courtney. Do you think uh, that we're ready in America to elect a, a woman president one of these days soon, if the right candidate comes along? I would say it had to be the right candidate. It doesn't matter if it's male or female, just as long as they're the right one. Yes. And what about some of your own role models, Courtney? Who are some of the women who maybe have influenced or inspired you in your life? Other than my mother, I would think that Nancy Reagan has been very strong in, in my influence. She's very active in the Don't Say No, I mean, Say No, excuse me, to drugs program. And that has been something I've been really involved in. Mm -hmm. Have you got a chance to work uh, as Miss Universe for that cause? I would love to. Courtney Gibbs, very charming. Thank you. <laughs> and Miss Japan is Muzuho Sakaguchi. She's a graduate of Shoen Women's University. And what are you studying there? American literature. Actually, you've already finished, haven't you? I said you graduated, yes. Um, you're studying American literature. What are some of the differences between American and Japanese literature? Um, Ameri um, Japanese literature has more than 1,000 years history. And American literature has 200 years history. But, <laughs> but I found there's, there's no different. Um, it's so same. I mean. Um, but we're a short story compared to you. <laughs> yeah. Now I know you also had an ambition to be a race car driver. Yes, <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, well? This might be almost as dangerous uh, being on television, live, and Miss Universe traveling around the world. Where, where where's the first place you'd like to visit? Um. Well, I was living in New York for five years when I was a little children, so I want to visit New York first. And, oh, you, you want to go and, back? Yes, and I want to see my friends. What were some of your fondest memories about the good old U.S. of A? Oh, that was garage sale. And the which? Garage sale. Garage sale? Yes, Somebody sold you a garage? <laughs> yes. Uh, it, I like it very much. We don't have in Japan, and uh, I can't find many, many antiques, and which I can't find in my country. Yes, but ours are only 200 years old. Remember, Miss <laughs> <laughs> so Japan. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> Our first semi-final competition is semi-over now, so let's take a break and join Tracy. Thank you, Alan. With me is the reigning Miss Universe, Cecilia Beloco. Now, Cecilia, you were the first ever Miss Universe from Chile. Tell me, what was it like when you went back for your homecoming? Well, it was just incredible. 
There were millions of people and I was overwhelmed by it. They gave me so much love. They gave me so much extra. I had all I needed to share with the world for the rest of my year. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Well, I know 10 young women who would love to be talking about their experiences this time next year. And we'll get a chance to meet the second five in the interview competition when we come back. We've now interviewed five of our semi-finalists. We have five to go, beginning with Miss Thailand, Porntip Naki Ronkunok. <laughs> Porntip, she uh, won the national costume competition, incidentally, and she attends Pasadena City College. Now, how did you get to be Miss Thailand from Pasadena? Well, you don't have to live in Thailand to be a... Uh, Thai person. I hope to set a good example for the Thai people in my country, for I am a Thai person, and yes, I did grow up in Los Angeles, but I'm a Thai person throughout, and I, I, know, I, I live the Thai culture, and I speak the Thai language, and I just want everyone to know that I am proud to be a Thai woman. Who first taught you your English? My English? Well, English wasn't allowed to be spoken at home. Only Thais was to be spoken at home. That's how I kept my language. So I think I owe it to Big Bird. I watched Sesame Street a lot when I was a little girl. <laughs> I learned mine from the Cookie Monster. Yes, I understand. Uh, now, I know that you have a charity project for Thai children that you work on. Yes, unfortunately, Thailand's not only a beautiful country that's rich in culture and tradition, but it has its problems, too, and our children is one of them. Um, in fact, 10,000 of our children died last year of malnutrition, and I'm hoping, as Miss Thailand, I can make a difference for these children. You certainly will. Keep up that good work. Miss Thailand? Thanks. Miss Korea is Chong Yung Chong. She's a high school student, and uh, she's studying at the High School for the Arts. There you are. Hello, Miss Korea. Hello. Um, and you have a translator. Um, you, you want to be a Korean folk dancer, it says here. What kinds of stories are told in Korean folk dance? She's learning Chinese traditional folk dance right now, and there are two kinds of traditional folk dances. One is for show, and uh, another one is for the plight of women. Uh, one is for the plight of women, and one is for show, yes. for entertainment. Will you be involved at all in the Olympics this year? Uh, 이번 올림픽 때요. 네. 제 이번 올림픽 때 미스 코리아들이 아, 협회가 있어요. 노원 해라고요. 근데 그 협회에서 아, 그 미스 코리아들이 피켓 거를 해요. 그러니까 팻말을 들고 앞으로 나가는 거죠. 근데 네. 아, 그때 올림픽 때 사람들도 생각하기를 굉장히 좋은 대회라고 생각해요. 네. 그리고 아, 만약 기회가 된다면 사회자님 그리고 심사위원님 그리고 사, 여기 모인 사람들을 모두 초대하고 싶고요. 그 다음에 <웃음> <웃음> 그 다음에 초대하신 이분들에게 아, 맛있는 김치로 제가 대접하겠습니다. I think she's competing in every event. <웃음> yes, yeah, she is going to be involved in the, in the Olympics. And uh, she wants. To, she's also very excited and happy about the Olympics taking place in Korea. She wants to invite all the audiences here to eat the Korean traditional kimchi. Mm -hmm. And come and stay at your house. <laughs> Korean hospitality. We look forward to that. Thank you very much. Miss Colombia is Diana Patricia Arevalo. She's a university student and she studies business. Hello, Diana. What kind of business do you hope to be in? ¿En qué clase de negocio te gustaría estar? Bueno, primero que todo, tengo que llegar a Colombia a estudiar porque no he terminado mi carrera y yo creo que mi empresa va a ser y no sé por qué, pero siento algo que mi empresa va a ser referente a la mujer y pienso montar una empresa. Sobre el maquillaje, sobre cosméticos. 
Well, first of all, I would like to go back to Colombia to finish my career. I haven't finished yet. And I believe that my business will be around, centered around a woman, makeup. Mm -hmm. Now, I also read that uh, you have a pet boa constrictor. There's a famous part of, uh, of Taipei called Snake Alley. Did Deanna have a chance to visit there and learn some of the customs? Eh, sabemos que tienes una boa como mascota. Hay un lugar en Taipei que se llama Snake Alley. ¿Lo has visitado? No, no he tenido la oportunidad de visitarlo, pero me han hablado de ello. Y mi mamá estuvo hace pocos días allá y me contó que es como una especie de costumbre en que allí cogen las culebras, las parten por la mitad, las abren y los toman esa sangre para dar más vitalidad y más vigor. Yo no sé, pero yo creo que a mí me gusta tenerla, pero viva, pero no ni, come, ni tomarme la sangre ni comérmela. Well, yes, I've heard about it, but I haven't gone. Some friends went the other day and they told me what it was all about. They cut open the snake, they get the blood out, <laughs> and I don't think I would like to do that. <laughs> well, for those of you who are still with us, <laughs> yes, there is a custom here that uh, shows a man's virility. If he, if he drinks that, you would think a nice mustache would do. Um, you are a lovely young lady. Thank you. Miss Colombia. Gracias. Miss Norway is Bente Brunland. She's a personal development trainee. Hello, Bente. Now, how, how do you go about developing your person? Um, how, how you do it? It's a lot of things that... Well, everybody goes to school to develop uh, special work, whatever. But they... It's seldom a lot of people that develop their personality. So uh, where I'm a trainee, we have these things, like enthusiasm, a lot of things. What's the first impression you like to make on people? The first impression? The first impression is always positive. Yes. It certainly has been here. You're a semi-finalist. Uh, it says you also have an ambition to become a comedian. What have you been doing for laughs here? It's a lot of work to be here. What, do you do, what have you done for fun? Well, I have Miss Iceland as my roommate, so... <laughs> and she's very funny. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Lucy and Ethel in Taipei. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, we have done a lot of other things, too. We've been on sightseeing. And we've met a lot of... Strange people from the organization, cameramen and everything. Yes, I've met some of those strange people too. <laughs> yes, big smiles and sore feet you'll have when you leave. Miss Norway, very nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Venezuela is Yahaira Vera. Yahaira is a medical doctor. She wins, she'll be doctor, Miss Universe. Now, uh, you already have a medical practice, Yahaira. Why would you want to be Miss Universe? Ya, ya eres una doctora. ¿Por qué quieres ahora ser Miss Universo? Uh, as a woman, as a doctor, I, will, I can carry on a preventive medicine message all over the world because it's needed to promote and to promote the health. And... Ahora voy a hablar en español. <risa> y quiero decirles a todas las personas del mundo, a todos los hombres de ciencia, a todos los médicos de todos los países que se unan a esta gran meta, a conservar y fomentar la salud. Y de esta manera podremos hacer realidad el sueño, la meta de la Organización Mundial de la Salud que dice Salud para Todos en el año 2000. I would like to send a message to all of, all of the men of science, everybody around the world involved in the world of medicine, to come and join me in this message, which is so needed in the world. It's a lovely message, yes. Other thing, and uh, to help at the organization health of the world, uh, decir que mejoremos la salud para el año 2000. Yes, and, pardon me, go ahead, Armando. Let's make health better for the year 2000. 
a nice message. I should note that she's also a, a mountain climber and a marathon runner and doctor, just a general underachiever. It's very nice to see you, Miss Venezuela. <laughs> The first of the three steps between semi-finalists and finalists has now been taken. Now you've probably picked your favorite, but remember there are two semi-final competitions yet to come, so don't be rushing your vote at home. All this backstage activities in preparation for our swimsuit competition. Now, live television leaves no time for rest. And in less than two busy hours from now, the new Miss Universe will be awarded fabulous prizes, totaling over a quarter of a million dollars. We'll take a look at that very valuable package right after this from Crest. Game shows are popular all over the world, but this contest is the ultimate. Nowhere will you see prizes like the ones Miss Universe takes home. You talk about your lovely parting gifts. She wins everything but the presidency. And maybe someday... Yeah, yeah, I like the sound of that. <laughs> but let's take a look at what tonight's winner will walk away with. Receive a $5,000 cash award plus a fashion footwear collection from Bakers and Leeds. The official fashion footwear for the Miss Universe contestants. From casual to career to dressy, Bakers and Leeds offers a greater choice in fashion footwear and accessories for today's woman. More than 600 stores coast to coast. Along with a $5,000 cash award, she'll receive the glorious look and feel you get only from Vidal Sassoon. With a five-year supply of Vidal Sassoon's advanced hair care products, Vidal Sassoon, the official hair care and styling system for the Miss Universe pageant. She'll win a library of top movies from MGM UA Home Video, including Fatal Beauty starring Whoopi Goldberg, now available at local video stores. From Didi Hotels, 40 weeks ownership in a Caribbean condo with membership in the Interval International Exchange Program. The new Miss Universe will also receive two first-class round-trip tickets to any vacation place of her choice, provided by Formosa Airlines. She'll win a Versa Climber Total Body Exercise Machine. Each workout is heart rate controlled for complete aerobic and strength conditioning. Tone and firm head to toe with Versa Climber from Heart Rate Incorporated, Costa Mesa, California. She'll tan faster with her new Rothschild Sun Swivel 700S tanning unit, plus Rothschild's new Sun Swept Tan Accelerator and Moisturizer, both from Rothschild Sun Systems, Syracuse, New York. Miss Universe will receive $10,000 in cash from Catalina, plus a complete wardrobe of Catalina sportswear, swimwear, and cover-ups. Catalina, the official supplier of swimwear and sportswear for the Miss Universe pageant since 1952. In a flash, she'll receive a $6,000 cash award from Minolta, plus video products and the revolutionary Maxim SLR autofocus system, the world's most complete autofocusing camera from the mind of Minolta. She'll receive a Yamaha Clavinova Organ, an electronic keyboard featuring the latest in digital tone generation, with easy play features that allow the beginner to sound like a full band the very first day. Yamaha. From Secret Antiperspirant, she'll receive a beautiful Temptations by Sherry Hill wardrobe, as well as a $5,000 cash award. Secret, the official antiperspirant of the Miss Universe pageant. Miss Universe will receive a $5,000 cash award, plus a year's supply of products from Oral-B, including the new Oral-B Ultra. Everywhere she goes, she needs her winning smile, the one she gets from Oral-B, the toothbrush dentist shoes. To top off her wardrobe, our winner will receive this beautiful natural black glamour mink coat, plus a sporty mink jacket, awarded by the internationally famous Flemington Fur Company, Flemington, New Jersey. No one will be able to keep up with Miss Universe in her exhilarating new Maserati Spider Convertible. No other car in the world has an interior quite like this, rich in Italian leather and polished wood, and Maserati is the only production car powered by two turbochargers. You only live once. Do it like Miss Universe will do it in a Maserati.
Miss Universe will receive this 50 karat diamond and sapphire necklace and bracelet set in 18 karat gold from Merit Diamond of New York, makers of quality jewelry at all fine jewelers. Our winner will also receive a $25,000 personal appearance contract and a $15,000 first prize. Which one of our 10 semi-finalists will walk away with all that treasure is completely in the hands of our 11 celebrity judges. They've been busy all week with the preliminary judging and the time has come to meet these most important people. Alan, the honor is yours. Thank you, Tracy. You know, everyone always talks about what a tough job the judges have and they really do. They have to spend a week in a world-class hotel in an exotic country where their limo takes them to work which consists of the grueling task of visiting with 66 bright and vital women. Did I mention gorgeous? Oh, what a burden. But our judges make that sacrifice and we love them for it, so let's meet them now. A Grammy-nominated record producer for some of the world's top artists, he made his biggest mark as founder and producer for Gloria Estefan and Miami Sound Machine. He is Emilio Estefan. He is the internationally renowned beauty expert and author whose Hollywood-based skin care centers cater to some of the world's most famous and beautiful faces. Please welcome Ole Henriksen. The president of Venezuela recently appointed this television personality as a director of the tourism ministry. We applaud his choice and welcome back Miss Universe 1986, Barbara Palacios Tede. This gentleman is one half of the history-making team who, in 1986, flew the Voyager around the world, non-stop and non-refueled. They set two absolute world records in the process. Here is Dick Rattan. With a 1987 Emmy Award nomination, she was recognized for her outstanding continuous performance as Roxanne Melman on the hit U.S. television series L.A. Law. No relation to Dick, but nevertheless, she is Susan Rattan. <laughs> Internationally known designer, entrepreneur, and art patron, his Naples-based empire encompasses fine luggage, women's and men's shoes, and apparel. The famous and fashionable Mario Valentino. <laughs> the first woman recipient of the Collier Trophy in the 77-year history of that prestigious aeronautical award. She was the other half of Voyager's record-breaking round-the-world flight team. The Wright brothers would be proud. This is Gina Yeager. He's an international recording and movie star whose talents have won him the Hispanic equivalent of the Oscar and Emmy Awards in the same year. Welcome, Fernando Allende. For 14 years, he's been a record setter and team leader with the New York Rangers of the National Hockey League. As a concerned citizen, he works to combat child abuse. He is Ron Greshner, an actress who has starred in over 30 plays and whose movie credits include such hits as 48 Hours, Throw Mama from the Train. She is best known worldwide as Detective Trudy Joplin on TV's Miami Vice. Welcome, Olivia Brown. World-renowned soprano and music teacher, she is a highly respected professor of vocal music at both the National Normal University and Chinese Cultural University. We welcome Yong Xiu Sing. Thank you, judges. Now just relax. After all, there are only 700 million people looking over your shoulder, and each of them has an opinion. I know you'll be able to please them all. Right, Tracy? True, Alan. I'm in here in the dressing room backstage, and I, I know that our judges are going to make somebody in this dressing room very happy tonight. Now, I have a question I'd like to ask some of you guys. Now, the judges cannot hear any of this, so tell me the truth. If you win Miss Universe, who's somebody that you'd really like to meet? I'd really like to meet Ronald Reagan. I'd like to meet. Oh, that's good. All right. How about you? Um. I would like to talk with Bob, how I say in the stage. <laughs> how about you? Well, I've always wanted to meet Michael London, always, always, ever since I'm very young. Yeah, he reminds me a lot of my dad. Well, that's good. The question here is in Taipei is still, who is going to be the next Miss Universe? And we'll move closer to the answer with the swimsuit competition, which comes up right after this.
We're up to round two of our semifinals. This is the swimsuit competition. Amidst this ocean of beautiful feathers, the swimsuit competition will begin. You see, here in the Republic of China, the ocean, because it reaches all shores, is the symbol of international brotherhood and sisterhood, of course. Our troop of players uses feather fans to create the illusion of ocean waves as our 10 semi-finalists model their cherry red competition swimsuits from Catalina. Now remember, the scores you see at home will not be shown to our audience here in the theater. It's the 1988 Miss Universe Swimsuit Competition, beginning with Miss Hong Kong. Pauline is 21 years old. She is 5 feet 7 inches tall and weighs 110 pounds. Her hair is black and her eyes are dark brown. Miss Dominican Republic, Patricia Jimenez. Patricia has brown hair and light brown eyes. She weighs 120 pounds and is 5 feet 9 inches tall. Patricia is 22 years old. Miss Mexico, Amanda Olivares. Weighing 116 pounds, Amanda is 5 feet 7 inches tall. She is 22 years old with dark brown hair and dark brown eyes. Miss USA, Courtney Gibbs. 21 year old Courtney is 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighs 124 pounds. She has light brown hair and blue eyes. Miss Japan, Mizuho Sakaguchi. Mizuho has dark brown hair and brown eyes. She's 22 years old, weighs 110 pounds, and is 5 feet 6 and a half inches tall. Miss Thailand, Porn Tip Naki Ronkano. Porn Tip is 20 years old. She weighs 114 pounds and is 5 feet 8 inches tall. Her hair is black and her eyes are dark brown. Miss Korea, Chong Yung Chang. With brown eyes and dark brown hair, Yung Chong is 18 years old. She stands 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs 119 pounds. Miss Colombia, Diana Arevalo. Diana is 20 years old. She weighs 121 pounds and is 5 feet 8 and a half inches tall. Diana is a brown eyed brunette. Penta. Miss Norway, Penta Brunland. Twenty-one-year-old Benta has green eyes and blonde hair. She weighs 132 pounds and is five feet nine inches tall. Miss Venezuela, Yahaira Vera. Yahaira has black hair and brown eyes. She is 24 years old, 5 feet 8 and a half inches tall, and weighs 121 pounds. We're 
two-thirds of the way towards learning who our five finalists will be. Our ten contestants will soon change into their evening gowns for that competition, which will complete the semi-final round. This will also be your last chance to outguess the judges. First, Tracy promised some scoring hits for you. Wherever she is, Tracy, oh, Tracy. I'm in. sitting on top of this pyramid to explain how five of our contestants will move closer to sitting on top of the world. The scores you see on the screen during each competition are fed into our computer. The five highest average composite scores will determine our five finalists. We're getting very close to that moment. But coming up, dirty dancing in the streets of Taipei, right after this from Pantene. Ladies and gentlemen, the reigning Miss Universe, Cecilia Voloco. The mysterious Orient, to me, it's a magical place. And Taipei is a city so exciting that every street is a delight for the senses. Around every corner, a new adventure. And behind every door, a fantasy awaits.
I hope they understood that I was telling them how great they were. And what about Cecilia? Wasn't she something? Hey, who knows? Maybe a star was born tonight. You know, it's interesting to watch these young women from all over the world rehearsing together. But what's really fascinating is to watch them just have fun together. Here they are in their sportswear by Catalina as they explore the exotic city of Taipei. In a mad rush to be sure they saw everything they could in the time they had, the delegates crisscrossed this beautiful island from one end to the other. Home base was at the Asia World Hotel right here in Taipei. And there's no better way to see this great city and greet its people than by being the guests of honor in a gala parade. But if you want to get away from all the hustle and bustle, just an hour plane ride and you're right in the middle of the rugged beauty of Taroko Gorge. The girls were welcomed here by the Aboriginal Ami people who've lived in this area for at least 10,000 years. It's a wild and woolly ride up the winding narrow road that was literally carved out of the sheer granite and marble walls of the gorge. I wouldn't drive on those roads on my own because they seemed very dangerous. You could go over the edge very easily. I just kept my eyes closed pretty much the way. Those who could keep their eyes open got some spectacular photo opportunities. I must say it was a lovely place. The scenery was beautiful. It was lovely. Very nice. Chinese opera is an incredible dramatic spectacle combining acrobatics, music, dance, mime, and fantastic makeup and costumes. And thanks to Taipei's Chinese Opera Cultural Center, Miss Universe candidates got a rare chance to be part of a real Chinese institution. When they were teaching us the steps that we had to do, it was difficult because the Chinese are so elegant and I didn't feel elegant at all. I tried to, but it was difficult. <laughs> the elaborate makeup can take as much as an hour or more. And that first peek at yourself in the mirror can be a little shocking. Wow, is that me? And when I opened my mouth, I said, yes, it was me. <laughs> Next, they were fitted for the beautifully embroidered traditional costumes. I think the clothing they gave us looked fantastic. Right before curtain, it was like opening night of any show anywhere. I was excited. I was really excited. I would be really pumped to have this picture at home and tell anyone because no one would, you know, would believe me otherwise. <laughs> But it really looked nice. About 200 miles south, another group of girls was on final approach to Orchid Island, a tiny tropical getaway with an even tinier landing strip. The scenery while we were riding on the scooters looked very tropical. It's like something out of the jungle. Well, I thought it was beautiful. I used to watch the, the show, the fantasy island, and that's what I thought for a moment when we were landing. So I think the island is beautiful. Orchid Island is home to another of the Republic of China's Aboriginal people, the Yami, a fishing tribe that build their boats exactly as their ancient forefathers did. In honor of their visit, the delegates got a very rare privilege, an invitation to come aboard. China was always somewhere in a fairy tale. It was like a dream actually coming here. There's no doubt that all of our contestants' lives were changed by their experiences here. What they'll carry away is a new understanding of a very special culture and its wonderful people. What a great time they were having. So relaxed. But there are moments when informality is put aside. Every woman wants to be at her very best in an evening gown, and that feeling is only magnified when the gown is worn in a competition. We'll see an international version of that feeling and that competition when we come back. This is Taipei, and we're live at the 1988 Miss Universe pageant. Our troupe of players now provides a background of oriental charm and splendor as we come to the third and last semi-final competition. You're about to see ten of the most beautiful women in the world, dressed in gowns of their own choosing and serenaded by 66 adorable children of Taiwan. Observing a long Miss Universe tradition, a little sister has been invited for each of our contestants, and they'll be the escorts in this starlight serenade to their big sisters.
ladies and gentlemen, the 1988 Miss Universe Evening Gown Competition, beginning with Miss Hong Kong, Pauline Young. Dominican Republic, Patricia Jimenez. Mexico, Amanda Olivares. Miss USA, Courtney Gibbs. Miss Japan, Mizuho Sakaguchi. Korea, Chang Yung Chong. Colombia, Diana Arevalo.
Miss Venezuela, Yahai Rivera. The judges now know everything they need to bring five of these ten contestants down into the finals. Is this a tough call? You be the judge. Obviously, a great deal of cooperation and skill is necessary to do a show of this dimension. And we've found that the people of Taiwan can get anything done. You need a 30-foot bridge? Come back in an hour. You want a 50-foot pyramid? Ready after lunch. Well, we're proud to say there's a sticker on this show that says Made in Taiwan. The Miss Universe pageant is extremely grateful to many people here in the Republic of China. And we'd like to take a moment now to recognize a few very special friends. Chairman of the host committee, Mr. C.H. Shin. Senator from the Legislative Yuan of the Republic of China, Ying Chi Yao. And it's my pleasure to introduce Miss Emilia Bien Bien Rojas, Chairman of the Board, Asia World Plaza Hotel in Taipei. And our thanks to everyone here in Taipei. Thank you, Tracy. Have you at home made your choices for our five finalists? Well, if you haven't, you better hurry up because our judges have. Alan will tell all of us who they are when we come back after this from Downey Sheets. If you think the contestants have a lot of costume changes, what about our troop of players? They've been a dragon, uh, an ocean wave, then presto, a lantern. Now, they're butterflies. And beautiful ones at that. According to Chinese legend, the butterfly is the symbol of the changing nature of beauty and the freedom of the human spirit. The national flower here in the Republic of China is the plum blossom. It signifies the harmony of nature and man, and since it blooms in the winter in spite of the cold, cold weather, it also symbolizes the perseverance of the Chinese people. Now let's welcome back our 10 semi-finalists as I head over to pick up the computer results to find out who makes the final five. One of our 10 semi-finalists, you've seen and heard everything our celebrity panel has seen and heard. Now you get to compare your choices with those of our judges. Looks like Alan's ready. Here are the names of our five finalists competing for the title of Miss Universe 1988. Again, the names will be read in no particular order. Here we go. Of the five finalists, one of them is Miss Mexico. Also still eligible, Miss Hong Kong. Let's hear it for Miss Korea. Two chances left, and one of them is Miss Japan. One more young lady in the universe can be crowned this year, and she is... Miss Thailand! One of these 
five young women will be the next Miss Universe. How about your selection? Did your original choice make it this far? If so, nice work. If not, try again. The odds are better now. This incredible island was long known by the name Portuguese sailors gave it 400 years ago, Ilha Formosa, the beautiful island. Early Chinese settlers call it Baodao, Island of Treasures. Together they make an almost perfect description. It is both a land of breathtaking beauty and a rich treasure chest of opportunity for the nearly 20 million citizens of Taiwan, the Republic of China. The Chinese have always had a love affair with nature, and this island, 250 miles long and 80 miles wide, is a real garden of earthly delights. From the towering, misty heights of the Alish mountain range, with its dense forests and cascading rivers, to the tiny tropical islands of the south, with their wild lava beaches and lush jungles. The teachings of Confucius, Lao Tzu, and Buddha are very much alive in the Republic of China, shaping a national character that seems to have an unlimited capacity for taking on impossible jobs and getting them done. Forty years ago, when two million Chinese, led by Chiang Kai-shek, left the mainland and came to Taiwan, they set out to transform a quiet farming province into a world-class industrial power. Phase one, so-called 10 great projects. Targets like creating a major shipbuilding industry were set and met. Today, the Republic of China builds and repairs everything from the biggest super tankers and container ships to the most finely crafted private yachts for clients from all over the world. Their success story was the same in steel production, petrochemicals, atomic energy. And today, the Republic of China is a world trader in literally hundreds of products from high-tech electronics to toys. Although the term economic miracle gets used a lot, what has been accomplished here in just a generation is truly miraculous. And that miracle has been shared by the people living here who now enjoy one of the highest standards of living in Asia. And if you leave to shop like I do, remember to bring some comfortable shoes because there are bargains to be had everywhere. The Chinese character for the dragon, the symbol of strength and good fortune. The dragon has smiled on Taiwan, Republic of China, giving it great economic strength, one of the highest growth rates in the world, and blessing this land with the hard-working people who are totally devoted to their families and preserving Chinese culture. In our time here, we found them to be warm and outgoing, and we thank them all for making our stay on the beautiful island just beautiful. Fantastic land. We'll all leave the Republic of China with wonderful memories, but one young woman will have her life forever changed. We're very close to finding out which of these five will be the next Miss Universe right after this from Vidal Sassoon, the official hair care and styling system of the 1988 Miss Universe pageant. For our judges, this is their final deliberation. They will observe as each finalist comes center stage, and at that moment, each judge tells his computer whether that young woman should be fourth, third, second, first runner-up, or in fact, whether she should be the new Miss Universe. 
One judge, one vote. Let's begin with Miss Mexico, Amanda Olivares. Amanda hopes to have a career in the import business, but before that she'd be happy to become Mexico's newest export to the world. Her answer is going into the computer now. Miss Hong Kong. There has never been a winner from Hong Kong. Pauline Jung is hoping she'll be the first. She's an actress and she's trying to act calm in front of the judges. Miss Korea. Chang Yung Chong is a dance student. But right now in Taipei, she's a finalist and that's all that's on her mind. Miss Japan. Mizuho Sakaguchi has already made a great impression on the judges. Will they make a lasting impression on her by awarding her the title they all came to claim? Miss Thailand. There has only been one contestant from Thailand to ever win this universe, and that was 33 years ago. Porn Tip hopes it's time again. The judges have made their final deliberations. The computer is making its final tabulation. We'll have those scores, but first a moment with Tracy and a very special guest. Our Miss USA pageant took place in February. Miss Universe is about to reach its final moment. Then there'll be just one more stop in our triple crown of beauty, the Miss Teen USA pageant. That's when this beautiful young lady will see her successor crowned. She's our reigning Miss Teen USA, Christy Addis. Christy, what are your thoughts? Tracy, I have had an incredible year. Filled with so many exciting moments, it seems like a dream. But I am looking forward to watching someone else start down that same road in July. Christy and I hope you'll join us here on CBS July 25th for the Miss Teen USA pageant, live from San Bernardino, California. Thank you, Christy, and congratulations on an outstanding year. And I'll see you in California. See you there. But before we do anything else, we have a new Miss Universe to meet. And that'll happen right after this from Secret, the official antiperspirant of the 1988 Miss Universe pageant. It's time now for the reigning title holder to take her traditional walk, offer her words of farewell, and accept our congratulations on a job well done. Here's Miss Universe 1987, Cecilia Beloco. Tonight is a very special night. Just look into my eyes and you will see what all of you as friends all around the world from Singapore to the Republic of China, in more than 20 countries, have given me and have made grow inside of me. Love and gratitude for each and every one of you. And there is no possible way I could ever forget nor erase from my mind and heart every single word I've heard and every single face and smile I've seen. A ti, mi querido Chile, gracias por tu apoyo. A ti, papá, por tu fuerza y confianza. Y a ti, mamá. For that means immense paz interior. To my successor, my very best wishes, and to all of you, may God bless you. Hasta siempre.
Thank you, Cecilia. Our computer has tabulated the votes of our judges and printed the final result. That printout contains the names of our fourth, third, second, and first runners-up, as well as the name of the new Miss Universe. To assist us with the crowning is Miss Teen USA, Christy Addis. Now, these results have been reviewed by representatives of the international accounting firm of Ernst & Winnie and will be given to me my now, my now, my now, I'm so excited, I'm speaking mumblees, a foreign language here. Mr. Mark Ward has given me the final results. And here we go. Before we do, I want to congratulate personally every contestant in this pageant. I think their families and their countries must be very proud tonight. They've shown us an example of just how the world can work and how beautiful it can be, and we thank you for that. Ladies, your moment has arrived. The fourth runner-up is Miss Hong Kong. The third runner-up, Miss Japan. The second runner-up is Miss Mexico. Ladies. I'm about to name our first runner-up and the new Miss Universe. Now, both are important roles because should the new Miss Universe, for any reason, be able to be unable to complete her reign, then the first runner-up becomes Miss Universe. The first runner-up, Miss Korea, Miss Universe, is Miss Thailand. Born to Aki Rosano, Miss Universe, 1988. You're now the new Miss Universe. You've won all the cash awards, the magnificent prizes, totaling almost a quarter of a million dollars. And now, as your predecessor, Cecilia Beloco, reads the Miss Universe Creed, please take the traditional walk of the new Miss Universe. Horn tip, Naki Rotkano. representing the countries in the Miss Universe pageant in order to further the cause of international peace, justice, and mutual understanding to solemnly dedicate ourselves to the highest ideals of sportsmanship, friendship, and goodwill. This is Alan Thicke with our new Miss Universe, Horn Tip Naki Ronkonok. We thank you for joining us here at Taipei, Republic of China. Be good to everybody. Good night. For all of us, this has been a night to remember. But for Miss Thailand, Horn Tip Naki Ronkonok, it's a night that has forever changed her life. She is the new Miss Universe, and the world is waiting to celebrate her victory. On behalf of Alan Thick and everyone connected with the Miss Universe pageant, thank you and good night. Portions of this program were recorded.